Hey, this is Jack Jackson. We're talking about independent events. We've been talking about that for the last few videos. And we're going to see how this independent events show up in a cross tabulation table or, or contingency table, sometimes these are called. And it turns out that we have this basic property that the probability of A intersect B is the probability of A times the probability of B if and only if they're independent. So we always have in a, true, in a table like this that this row sum equals what the total probability at the, at the end and the column sums are the probabilities at the bottom and we always have a probability one at the bottom. That's a property for any of these uh, tables like this. But what you also have is an extra property if and only if they're independent is that you can multiply. So remember what goes right here is the probability of A intersect B and we can find that by probability of A times probability of B. So we just multiply, we'll get that. And that works out similarly for all four of those cells. For example, we multiply these two here to get that one, and this one, and this one to get here, and here, and here to get here. So you can multiply uh, the, the, call, the corresponding uh, marginal probability at the bottom and at the right to get the corresponding probability of the intersection in the middle. And that happens if and only if it is they are independent events. So if they're independent events, that's given. Let's see if you can complete the probabilities in this tree. Figure it out and then come back when you're done. Press pause now. Well, you see that the first thing we can do is, well, first of all, we, can, we know it's always one here. That's easy. But we can multiply across here and here to get this probability right there. So 1 4 times 1 3rd is 1 12th, and this will be what the probability of A intersect B has to be. It's the probability of A times probability B if and only if A and B are independent. Now we can just use the summing thing to figure out, finish it out. Uh, these two have to sum to 1, so 1 minus 1 4th is 3 4ths here. Uh, these two sum to, to 1 3rd, so 1 3rd minus 1 12th will be the probability here. And then once I have those, I can, can kind of finish out. And so uh, we can look at this a couple different ways. So here, one half, one minus one fourth is three quarters. Uh, one third minus one twelfth. Let's see, that would be get a common denominator, multiply by top four in the top and bottom here. Get four twelfths minus one twelfth is three twelfths. Then divide out of three, and that's one fourth. So this is a probability one fourth. So these two add one twelfth plus one fourth is one third. And then, of course, 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds here. We can finish by, uh, by doing uh, two different ways we can finish. We can either do 3 fourths times 2 thirds. Okay, the 2's cancel, 3 cancel. That gives us a half here. Or we can do 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is a half to get it there. And then that gives us several ways left to do the last one but we get one half and one six for those final remaining probabilities whether you're doing those by subtraction or multiply, multiplying together. So let's check and make sure all of the things work. First of all, they must sum up, check the row sums and column sums, and they should work just like any table like this. One twelfth plus one six better be one fourth, and sure enough it is. One fourth plus one twelfth plus one half is three fourths, that checks. 1 12 plus 1 fourth is 1 third, that checks. 1 6 plus 1 half is 2 thirds, and of course 1 third, fourth plus 3 fourths is 1. So we checked all the row to totals and all the column totals. Now, that's going to be true for any uh, probability table like this that's a uh, two way contingency table or cross tabulation table. And we want to check our products as well, though. Since they're independent events, they, they uh, check this way. One third times one fourth is one twelfth. One third times three fourths is one fourth. Two thirds times one fourth is one sixth. And two thirds times three fourths is one half. So convince yourself that all those things are true. And you will see that this checks out. There's the completed table again. Now, suppose A and B are independent events and you're given the probability of A intersect B is 0.13 and the probability of B is 0.26. Can you fill out the rest of this table? Actually, it turns out there is enough information to do that if we know that extra information that A and B 
or independent events. Go ahead and finish this out. Well, let's see, there's a couple things we can do. First of all, we can just with any table, remember we started with the 0 0.26 and the 0 0.13, we can subtract. 0 0.26 minus 0 0.13 is 0 0.13 so that the column, so that, that row total works out. Of course, we always have one in the bottom, that's easy. Well, if we got one in the bottom, we got the, the column total's got to work. So 0 0.26 minus, or 1 minus 0 0.26 is 0.74. So now we have the first row and the last column done. Okay, so now let's see what could we do. What can we do next? Okay, well next we know that whatever is here for the probability of A, when I multiply it by 0.26, I get 0.13. Because I've got this number already worked out in this one. I don't have this one yet here. So the way to do that is by dividing. So you say, take the 0.26 divided by 0.13 and you get 0.5. Similarly here, and then we can get these last by doing either by multiplying 0.5 times 0.74 to get 0.37, or we could uh, subtract uh, and get this. So you can check it to make sure everything works out right. So now the column total should work out. 0.13 plus 0.37 is 0.5. That's true here and here. 0.26 plus 0.7. 4 is 1. So the column totals work. What about the row totals? 0.13 plus 0.13 is 0.26. 0 0.37 plus 0.37 is 0.74. And of course 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1. And then the product should work out since it's independent events. 0 0.5 times 0 0.26 is 0 0.13. 0 0.5 times 0.74 is 0.37. And take this 0 0.5 times the 0.74 to get this 0 0.37. And this 0 0.5 times this 0 0.26 to get this 0 0.13 and we see that everything checks out. From the table, let's work out the probability of B given A and the probability of A given B. Well, in general, the probability of B given A is the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by probability of A. So that would be the 0.13 divided by the 0.5, that's 0.26. But of course, notice that is the same as probability of B, we know in general that the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B if they're independent events. So we should have known that the answer was going to be just what was here. Similarly, we know that the probability of A given B is just the same as the probability of A, so it should be 0.5. But it's also the probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. That's what it always is. So it's uh, the 0.13 divided by the 0.26. And that turns out to be 0.5, and sure enough, that is the probability of A. All right, here's another one. Let's fill out the probabilities in this table. Now, notice I was not given that the A and B are independent events, so we don't, we can't use that fact and, and anything that that tells us just yet. That may or may not be independent, we'll find out in a little bit. So just using this and what you would normally do from a tree or a table like this. Finish filling out the probabilities. Press pause and come back when you're ready. All right, so the first thing I would do is notice that the row to totals and the column totals work. So 0 0.14 plus 0 0.33 is 0 0.47 here. 0.14 plus 0.35 is 0.49 here. The total is 1 here, so once I get these two, if I know the probability of A, then I can figure out the probability not A by doing 1 minus whatever we have here. And 1 minus whatever we have up here for probability B is a probability not B. Finally, then we just have the 1 left, and we know that we can find it by either subtracting uh, probability B of not B minus the probability of this intersection here, or we can do it the subtraction the other way. So either way, this is what we turn out to get. Let's check everything. 0.14 plus 0.33 is 0.47. 0.35 plus 0.18 is 0.53, that checks. 0.49 plus 0.51 is 1. So the, the column totals are right. Let's check the row totals. 0.14 plus 0.35 is 0.49. 0.33 plus 0.18 is 0.51. And 0.47 plus 0.53 is 1. So this is a legitimate table. <clears throat> now the question is, are A and B independent events? We didn't assume that. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Well, what do we have to check? Well, there's a couple ways we could check it. 
<clears throat> and either way we check, we find that they're not independent events. We could find the probability of A times probability of B, so the 0.47 times 0.49. If they're independent events, it would be the 0.14, and it's not. It's, it's a more like 0.2303, so this is these, it's not 0.4, which is the probability of the intersection, so that's not independent events. Another way to see it is look at the probability of A given B. Well, that's always probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. So that's the 0.14 divided by the 0.49. And that turns out to be approximately 0.285714. It's actually that repeating, six-digit repeating pattern. And that's not the same as 0.47, which is just the probability of A. So the probability of A given B is not the same as the probability of A, so these are not independent events. So notice that extra structure that we have where we can multiply a row, the marginal pro probabilities on the, the, of the row and the column to get the intersection, that only works for uh, independent events. If it doesn't work, the events are not independent. Next video, we'll see how independent events show up in probability trees.